<laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. So, hi everyone. I, my name is Ari Levin. I'm gonna tell you a little about, bit about the secrets to smooth animation. Um, it's uh, um, timing. Yes. So, uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the differences between using set interval and request animation frame. They're two common things. Uh, we probably use both a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna go into a little detail about the quirky behavior of the two of them. Uh, so set interval, that's what uh, we're used to using. You just, you, uh, it's very easy to set up. It's uh, simple to make whatever sort of timing you want. You have a set interval function. You send it a function you want to repeat, and then you just tell it the rate of repeat in milliseconds. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. Uh, for example, you know, here's set interval. I'm running at 60 frames a second. I'm running at 120. I'm running at 30. And these are all milliseconds, but it's only kind of sort of. So for instance, if I go over to this, uh, this page I've set up with set interval uh, to run at 60 frames, and I refresh it, you'll notice it's not actually running at 60 frames a second. It's just shooting for 60 frames a second. So it's, it's trying to get there. And if I stop it here, like any time I click, I'm going to stop it. Uh, it kind of goes all over the place. It can go, this is a little, these are, sometimes it can go in the 70s, sometimes it can go in the 50s. Uh, it's a really, uh, yeah, it's a little bit inconsistent. Um, but what's nice about it is that it's very easy to stop. So when you call it, you actually can assign it to a variable, and that variable will return a number, and that number represents the interval loop, and you can just call clear interval, and you send it to it, and, uh, and it just stops it. It's very straightforward. You're just like, here you go. Here's the, and the first time you call it, it'll give you the number one, the second time the number two, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, we've all used it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and actually, again, if you look here, uh, I have it updating down here. It's just, it's, that's the number one. And so I, I click it, and it passes the number one, and it stops the animation. Uh, request animation frame, on the other hand, it's primarily thought of for animation and gaming. And one of the reasons is because it's optimized to be a little smoother. Uh, but one of the issues is that loops need to be created manually. And any timing you do needs to be set up manually. Uh, and you can tell that even by the way the function's called, it's just, you know, you say request animation frame, and then you give it a function to call, not a function to repeat. Um, so it's like you might have seen this. You ever look at any tutorial on it? It's pretty straightforward. It's here's your, your game loop or your application logic, and you'll end it with a request animation frame that calls the function again. And then somewhere down the line, you'll call request animation frame with that function one time, and you'll set it up. And you're just like, here's the loop, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and you can't set up specific intervals because it's just designed to be done at 60 frames a second. So if I go you know, here, uh, it's at 60 frames a second, and you can tell it's running down here. If you really want to see like, that it's actually updating, I can like, uh, do like a screen resize, which uh, if you're not aware is very intensive like, uh, on, your, on your browser, so it's kind of fluctuating all over the place. But if it's just still, there it is. Uh, and Chrome's got a funny uh, behavior because uh, if I were to say do this, sorry, I should have given you like a seizure warning. Um, uh, there it is going at 60 frames a second. But uh, if you overload it, um, as long as you don't overload it too much, it'll actually just, it'll just drop to 30. There's no like in between. It just goes 60 to 30 because those are typical frame rates that like games uh, specifically like kind of want and people shoot for. Uh, so it's just trying to give you the best, ex smoothest experience you can have. Um, all right, let me get rid of that guy. All right. So uh, yeah, and uh, similarly, when you call it, it passes an interval, so uh, it should be just as easy to stop. It. No, actually, it, it isn't, because what happens is, if you notice here, uh, if I try to stop it and do like an on click, uh, it can't actually stop, because that number it gives you back is just the specific number related to that one frame. So once you call it, that frame, the frame's gone. So if you actually want to stop it, you have to actually keep track of the integer itself. And uh, to do that, you have to make your own custom function, um, which I've done here. We're going to like set it up by, we'll call it RAF for request animation frame, where you, you give it a function, and then you make up this object. We'll call it a handler object. And it'll make a little function loop that's going to go through, and it'll call the function we want. And then I'll assign to the object uh, like a dot ID property that calls the request animation frame. And uh, then we'll set it up. And uh, here we'll invoke it. And uh, this way, you know, you'll notice down here, let's do, uh, 
Mm -hmm. You notice here, like down below, is the different IDs for that for that request animation loop. And if I click it, then it actually will stop. And so now, if I were to like do this, the number's not going to change. It's just going to stay at 60 because it's not updating. It's just the animation's done. Um, that's all it is. Whereas again, you'll see it like kind of fluctuates. I hope it's fluctuating. But yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so it's a little. It's a little more work to get done, but it's clearly much, much more consistent than if you were to use set interval. Uh, but wait, there's, there's a little bit more. So like, what, are we, what can we do with this? So um, one of the benefits of request animation frame, despite being like, other than just being more consistent, is that we can actually create our own interval functions as well as our own set timeout functions. Uh, and that's because it, um, when you call it, it'll actually pass through a timestamp parameter. And this is just, I don't know if any of you ever used uh, performance.now. Uh, we can just show you what that is. Like if I just call performance.now, uh, that gives me the amount of time my application's been running since you loaded it. Uh, and it's like to the thousandth of a, of a millisecond. Um, so that's passed every single time you call request animation frame. And so you can use that, and we'll just use the old function that, that we were using before. We'll use that to say, like, set up. Um, oh, I forgot to pass this a millisecond. Uh, we can use that to uh, set up like our own little set interval function. Um, and so let's do interval. And so like here, I've I've set it at like 200 uh, milliseconds. And here's just outputting at what time it's actually updating. Um, well, what's particularly strange about that is like again, this is this is how it is for request animation, you notice that it's fairly consistent. It's just about 200. We wanted 200. It gives us about every 200. It'll call this function. And you're probably like, well, what's the point of, of doing this? Uh, well, if you were to take, if you were to instead do um, use set interval and give it 200 milliseconds as a parameter, you notice that it actually triggers much more wildly. It is not nearly as consistent as using request animation frame. Um, but what's even stranger is that that's only true to a point. Um, like if you, were to, if you were to try and go to a lower number with request animation frame, you're going to run into some math issues because it's designed for 60 frames a second. So like if you try to get something less, this is not going to happen. Um, and if you try to, uh, like, um, uh, let's see. Like if you try to, let's say, we'll do like, I'm going to set this up for every five milliseconds, and that's obviously not going to do anything. Um, you know, set interval will actually try and do that, and it can actually do that to some extent. Uh, whereas this is just going to cap at 60, and that's going to be that. Um, all right. Uh, and if you were to try to do a set timeout, you can make, basically make your own custom set timeout with it. Um, but you're, this is one instance where request animation frame is, is not much better because um, if I were to do timeout, I've set this up for about, I forget, two seconds or, or 1,200 milliseconds. It comes out to 1,210. We'll run it again. Just out of curiosity, 1,201. Whereas the actual traditional set timeout, still not exact, but it's much more consistent and it's much closer. Uh, so in loops and set intervals, set uh, you know request animation frame loops are much more consistent and much more reliable, um, as long as you're like above about 100 milliseconds. Uh, but for timeouts, you're just going to want to use the traditional set timeout. Here, now see this is this is the custom one, and it's like 12:11, 12:05. Yeah. All right. So yeah, just to go over it again, like the main difference, set interval, it's easy to set up. It's very easy to cancel. It can go well above 60 frames a second. You can get it to like, I think, a, you can get it to like 300 nearly, <laughs> um, which is, I don't know, yeah. Um, and, uh, <coughs> but it's wildly inconsistent. You have to track your time manually. Um, and then uh, mm, this is a little bit of another consideration, especially for like mobile applications. Like set interval will actually run in the background, and therefore it's energy inefficient. It's actually going to keep running when you move away from the browser. If you hide it, it'll just keep going. Whereas request animation frames designed to just sort of stop, and then that way like you can set them up, 
and then you can hide it, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to like keep doing calculations and everything. Um, it also has this nice handy built-in time parameter. Uh, all right, and those are actually, those are actually is uh, the end of it. I was just had a bunch of these little examples. Uh, did anybody have any questions about the, the difference between the two or use cases? No? All right, then. <laughs>